Andy Smith from New Zealand arrived in Hong Kong with visions of a concrete jungle, but with few concrete plans. He walked into an indoor and outdoor adventure as part-time hiker, but full-time restaurateur and entrepreneur, living and working in Hong Kong. You get out here and you lose yourself in the silence and you know you hear the, the breeze through the through the grass and the trees and you just have to look at that and it's just absolutely beautiful. Andy Smith wasn't going to let grass grow under his feet which is why he journeyed from scenic New Zealand and found the view to his liking in Hong Kong. Had the perception of Hong Kong as a lot of people do it being Victoria Harbour and high rises and once you actually find out how much of Hong Kong is actually country park and absolutely stunning views and walking trails and, and mountains then you know pleasantly surprised to be able to get out here whenever we can and um, go for a walk and have the downtime that you, you really need and crave in Hong Kong. Most people see points that start in maybe central and run up the peak and even at the peak you've still got houses and buildings and everything through there but you come out here and you've got thousand metre mountains, um, you know you can walk the, the Ox, Oxfam trail walker for 100 k's, um, you know Lantel trail 70, 70 k's and you can get out there for hours on end and just not see a building at all. Oh my goodness this is certainly a trek what? What I like about walking on Lantau is just the freedom of the, the high mountains, the flat, flat sections that you can walk for hours and hours on end. He so far enjoyed the dual life of restaurateur and hiker for seven years in Hong Kong. Lantau Island is Hong Kong's largest and its 147 kilometers gives hikers something to conjure as a mythical hideout for emperors and pirates with its difficult terrain, deep valleys and hidden pools. There's a large portion of people, especially on Lantau Island, whether it be Tung Chung Discovery Bay, over in Puyo, Chung Cha, the, the beaches over there. People come here for the nature side of it. It's the, the walking trails, the beaches, um, it's the nature that they're all looking for. So how much is it a shock to the system to swap the hills for hospitality? And fresh from the hills, why not take a few more steps to one of the most competitive restaurant areas in Asia? Soho is an eclectic area of nightclubs and bars. It's where Andy Smith and his associates at Costello Group decided to set up several restaurants just behind central Hong Kong. They also have restaurants in Australia, in Vietnam, and in Japan. But this is where they decided to really set up shop, and it's where they have the recipe for their success. Being a chef by trade, it was one of the things that I was invited up here to be a chef in one of the kitchens um, of the group, so I jumped at the opportunity. Never even entered my mind at the stage to come up here, but when the offer's laid on the table, you've got to look at all the different options that, it, that are put in front of you, so I came up, had a look, and liked what I saw, and have been here ever since. Hong Kong has an international reputation as a dining venue which is a good reason to attract young restaurateurs keen to hone their talents, which is why they work for restaurants like Costello Group Ula. There's a secret formula that, that you do put into place and all the boxes have to be ticked to make sure that it will be successful and you can pretty much go through that and it should, in theory, there's no 100% guarantee, run all the way through and be successful. Um, the hardest part is finding the right locations for them, the right staff to put in them and all the way through that formula, it, it has to be there to make sure that it is successful. Rents, wages and food costs are elements that get a good simmering to make them just right. And as a Hong Kong restaurant owner, you'll know when you're on the right track. Value for money, good service, good food, in a nice relaxed environment. It, it, there's nothing pretentious about, I mean, the environment may be nice and, and there's, especially with this one, the variation of the cafe, the coffee shop and, and the dining room. Um, has something for everyone, and this typifies the whole of the group. 
defeat customers is one of the biggest things. Once you get a loyal following, you can then branch that off and you can take that following onto the next opening and then from there that following starts again and that'll branch out again into the next opening. And, and to me, repeat business is one of the biggest things that you can, you can bank on. From Hong Kong, Andy Smith was able to expand his interest to a self-owned restaurant in Queensland, Australia, but could manage the entire operation remotely from Hong Kong, even selling it out. It all comes down to the secret ingredient of staff. Um, I had a partner down there that I could trust that ran the business and was as particular as I was with everything in day-to-day -day running of the business. Um, he, he handled a lot of the operation side of it, day-to-day uh, -day running, where I can sit back and go through the numbers and make sure that the menus are right, the staffing levels are right, and, and look after it that way. Which will mean Andy Smith can continue making forays into Hong Kong's hills while making forays into an expanding hospitality business. Not much further up to the top now. Oh, let's hope not. Yes, well, I'm glad you said that, Andy. <laughs>